from a cotton factory in Honduras to help boost exports to one of its most important customers, the U.S., to sourcing more coffee beans for the American market. The Biden administration wants to boost regional investment to shorten fractured supply chains and try to solve migration problems. Latin America and the Caribbean face significant losses from COVID, inflation, Russia's war in, in Ukraine, interest rate hikes, the debt buildup, and sudden price spikes. The head of the World Bank among a host of regional leaders meeting virtually in Washington, D.C. for a conference ahead of next month's Summit of the Americas. Prior to the event, the U.S. Secretary of State appealed for more U.S. private investment to try to offset the curse of what policymakers call the middle income trap. There's something of another kind of middle income trap um, that I know many of our um, closest neighbors experience. Countries that are not quite developed enough to qualify for membership in groups like the G20 or the OECD, and yet too developed to qualify for aid from institutions like the Inter-American Development Bank and the World Bank. The US is also looking at the politically sensitive issue of immigration. Opposition Republicans have hammered Democrats over immigration surges at the US border with Mexico, with many people from Central American countries fleeing a lack of opportunity there. So as midterm elections approach here in the US, the Biden administration hopes that private investment in some of these countries will make remaining there a more attractive proposition. But as it tries to leverage private investment to solve political problems, the US is facing a fresh diplomatic headache ahead of that summit next month. After Brazil's president inexplicably declared he won't attend, his Mexican counterpart is also threatening to snub the event unless the leaders of Cuba, Nicaragua and Venezuela, with whom the US has difficult relations, are invited. Owen Fairclough, CGTN, Washington.